do a little uh, a little fireside chat. So I'm gonna. What's really nice about uh, this venue is they've got this display right here, so um, we can we can know where we are in our slides without having to look back at that wall. It's nice. We're at the fire part right now. Yeah, it's where the, the wood is. Yeah. Do you see fire. the? Um, yeah. There's going to be a spark here in a second. That's how you know. Oh, there it was. You yep. missed it. So um, we Ben did a, a lightning talk last year about um, the sort of genesis of Cascadia Ruby, our, our little origin story, and I wanted to sort of. Uh, repeat that for those that missed missed it last year. Um, we Ben used to live in Portland. I used to live here, and we eventually became friends and through Seattle RB. And we're both at Gogoruko 2009. I think it was. It had to be 2010. Okay. I think it was. It was the year after the the incident that Ryan talked about. Yeah. Whatever the year that was. So that would have been 2010. And uh, we were sitting next to each other, we're like, Josh and Leah really put on a hell of a show, and you know, we liked this, and they really did a good job of that. And we like, started enumerating all these things. We're like, and we've been to a ton of conferences, big and small, and we're like, oh yeah, we hate it when this happens, and a lot of conferences do that. And we're like, describing our dream conference. And we're like, and I sort of confessed to having tried to sort of half start one in Seattle when I lived here, and he sort of confessed. <laughs> having tried to half start one in Portland, and we're like, why don't we just like super friends this and like our powers combined? It's true. And then, uh, you know, we didn't realize what we were getting into. Yeah, and uh, so we did, and we we set out to um, we set out to make a conference that was uh, better than Gogay Ruko, which if you've been to Gogay Ruko, you know is uh, an extremely high bar. And I think we beat them in some ways, and and did the best we could in others. Um, and that was last year. That's a nice way to say it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we were better than them in some ways, and we were really not in others. So, um, but uh, uh, and then we decided, you know, after last year's success, why the hell not do it again? And so here we are. Thank you all for coming out for our year number two. And, uh, and I don't know if it's interesting. A bit, a bit of trivia about the name. It was originally for a hot second called Pac Nord Dub. <laughs> right. yeah. Pacific Northwest Ruby Conference. Right. And, uh, and then someone pointed out that uh, our friends up north, it's not their north. So right. uh, all, all of the Canadians, <laughs> it's, it's their um, southwest. So I think Ryan. As, yeah, I remember there, Ryan coming up with yeah. the name. And I think it, there was like a Cascadia like freedom movement thing where they, they tried to secede. From oh, that's, that's a good question. Are generally people familiar with what Cascadia comes from? OK. So um, both Cascadia, both are. yeah, right. So. Uh, the name Cascadia is typically associated with this idea of a region that starts in Northern California and goes up through BC. So like if we were, if Cascadia were to secede from the Union and from Canada, however, whatever, however that works, I don't know, just like I don't believe in the Queen anymore. Um, <laughs> is there a Canadian here who can tell me if that's how it works? Talk to me later. Um, <laughs> So um, basically from, from Northern California, and it's, it's north of the bay, but not very far, all the way up uh, north of Vancouver is like one big region called Cascadia. Yeah, right, and from, from, you know, from the ocean to the, the Idaho border. No, it goes further than that. It goes all the way across. Okay, whatever, anyway, look it up. Um, but but we thought it was a really good. Uh, it's basically where there's trees growing. Yeah. When you get to Eastern Oregon, there aren't trees. True. We thought it was a really good representation because we really set out to to have this conference serve the Vancouver, Portland, and Seattle communities, um, which frankly is something that we've maybe not done a great job at. Right. Yeah. We've been really good at Seattle, not so good at at Portland and, and Vancouver. And but. even Seattle, I think you know we could have done better. And it's an artifact of. Has anyone um, organized a conference before? Crickets? Okay, Kobe. Terrence. Um, Terrence, yeah. Um, it's uh, non trivial. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Say the least. doing it whilst having, you know, like a full time job and uh, something kind of resembling a life or a boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever, it's, it's taxing and it takes a long time and we, we drop the ball on some things. Yeah. You know, things that we really wanted to do for ourselves and like, we kind of made some bold promises last year, this time, and that we uh, we didn't follow through on. So, sorry for that. But say again. 
There's always citrus water. Uh, you had me at citrus water. You want to talk about next year? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, sorry, uh, this this turned out to be a little bit more of like a real talk segment than I think some people were prepared for. But um, yeah, this this thing that we do is is really hard. And um, next year, in order to make it a little bit less hard, I think we're going to make some changes. Um, one of those changes is uh, we're planning on doing it in Portland next year. Uh, it was always our intention to move it city to city, to, to rotate through Portland and Seattle and Vancouver. We started here because I live here and uh, because it was, you know, it's, it's Seattle. It's Seattle RB and, and it, this is where the community was born. Um, and, Never huh? Never forget. Right. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to kind of make good on that. We're going to try and do it in Portland next year. Um, it's probably also going to be a little bit smaller of an event. Um, we, so uh, to give you a little insider info, another thing, another founding principle of Cascadia is uh, radical openness. And we haven't been very proactive about this, but um, I think we're both perfectly happy to talk about any detail uh, all the way down to financials if you're interested. I've certainly shown other conference organizers our budgets and stuff. Um, and so I don't mind telling you that uh, this room has a capacity of 350. Uh, there are 152 people here. Um, we were really ambitious last year when we signed up for this room. We thought we were going to sell out. And uh, it didn't happen. Um, this year we've got more people than last year, which is great. Um, but we still didn't sell out. And so uh, I think instead of, you know, uh, the other thing about it is that we pay about $30,000 for this venue. And so we want to try to make things easier on us by uh, basically just having a smaller room. So when, when we move to Portland, we're going to be looking for a space that holds fewer people, uh, yes. this many people. You know, We, we want to have 150 to 200 people there. Because that's I, I feel like I've been to enough conferences around that size now that I really feel like that's the, the sweet spot for this show. And uh, 300 people here, huh? Yeah, 300 people would have been too big, and so I'm kind of glad that we never got there. Um, so yeah, the size is still small enough to be high touch, you know. Right. Totally. I don't know that I actually met everyone, but I could have. Yeah. <laughs> Say again. How many people came last year? Uh, just under what we're at. Now. Yeah, I think I think final count in the door was 137, and that that includes speakers and. Um, comps that we gave out to uh, a handful of people who helped us out and uh, everybody who comes from the sponsors and yeah. Um, so, th so that's not 137 tickets sold? Yeah, no. Tickets sold in both cases we're below 100. So. And also like, you know, um, with regards to budget, like $30,000 is a grip ton of money um, and we did even more last year and that party last year was ridiculously priced too. But we decided that was one of the things we wanted to do. Uh, a lot of regional comps, like no dis disrespect to them, uh, we wanted to do something different. And a lot of regional comps are very budget. You know, they're uh, a flat room in a hotel. Um, they're, you know, they don't have awesome food if they have food at all, or you know, whatever. So we wanted to at least try to level up, try to you know bring more money in and spend more money on the thing. And this year, uh, there, there was a scary moment. <laughs> where we we were we had the the Google Docs spreadsheet, and there was this red number that we wanted to be black. And uh, it, uh, so so no joke, it it went from very seriously red to very slightly black in the course of one day, and that was the that was the best day yeah. like, <laughs> of the of the last twelve months leading right, up to this conference. Hair stopped growing yeah, out it was. I mean, it was it was five digits before the period, and then the next day it was a digit or two after it, or in the black, so. And, and that was, you know, just like a bunch of sponsor conversations that had been going on sort of all came together at once, yeah. so. But like, yeah. like, like, we're not joking when we say we couldn't do it without sponsors, because that day, like, our names are on a contract, and we've signed a deposit, or like, we've given a deposit. It's like, we're paying that money either way. Yeah, and actually, it's, um, so, uh, I don't want to get too sidetracked in this, but, um, I'm happy to talk about it individually later. Um, Steel City RubyConf um, is going on right now. In fact, they, they're, as they're three hours ahead, they just wrapped a little while ago. And that came uh, as a surprise to both of us. Um, we 
contracted for the same dates and we just didn't know. And uh, when it came up, it was um, it was kind of scary. Like, and and we went through a time where we were seriously thinking about canceling. Um, and then I looked at the contract and realized if we did, we were on the hook for uh, a lot of money. <laughs> um, and uh, and that's not. I mean. Being on the hook for a lot of money isn't what, what kept us doing the conference. We did it because we wanted to, and we thought we could still do a good job, and we did. Did I mean, everyone I've talked to has told me it was good, so. <laughs> Thanks, I, I hope, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> and this is just water, I promise. This, yeah, this is, yeah, right. This is also just water. So um, there's, another, there's another change happening next year. Ah, this is tough. Yeah. Um, this is my last one. Uh, I'm not going to be, uh, yeah. It, it's in very good hands. There's, there's a giant pile of hugs coming your way, buddy. Um, <laughs> no, so, so, and this is also a sort of segue into these other things. Um, I don't live here anymore, and remote programming is some degrees of easy. Remote uh, conf organizing is a different kind of difficult. Um, like this space last year, we agreed upon after, like, you know, he, he had seen it, and we, I had come up here to see it, basically. And I was in town for a week, and we ran around looking at spaces. And, you know, flying, whatever, three or four hours just to, like, look at a building is sort of weird. And, like, all, the party, I, I had nothing to do with that. Um, it was all, all on them, and they did a, It was barely me. Right, it was it's all on Karin, yeah. yeah. And, and they did a great job with it, and, like, I had a good time. I drank for free all night. <laughs> Lemonade. Just like every night. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but doing it remotely is super hard, and I'm not moving back here. I mean, I like LA. And um, I also do another conference. I, we mentioned this yesterday. I do a uh, farmhouse conf at, in my backyard at my house in Hollywood. And I've, I've done two so far, and they were a year apart, and I've decided to move that schedule up to six months apart. Two, two a year. So the last one was in May. Or both of them have been in May. The next one's in November, and the one after it will also be in May. And I think two comps a year is sort of my capacity. And, um, you know, I think we've, we've made a good thing. You know, like, you know, my voice is a part of what this has become, and I, I think it's in good hands. And uh, I think, think Ben and whoever he chooses to work with going forward will do a good show, and uh, I'll probably come to it. <laughs> uh, Unless it's scheduled against our right, house. Right. Uh, so, um, by the way, I, Shane's not going to pimp it himself, so I will. Um, I went to Farmhouse in May this year. Uh, it was in May, right? Yeah, who else did? A couple. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was seriously um, a, a, a very different experience to anything that I have done. Um, it's, for one thing, it's not a nerd conference. There are nerds there. There were quite a lot of nerds there, a lot of people I knew. But um, it's, it's I, do you call it a storytelling conference? Yeah, it's a story, like, people hang out under the tree in his backyard, which is no joke, that tree is amazing. And they talk about stuff, and it's, it's incredible. Um, if you get an opportunity, please go check it out. Um, I'm gonna make every one that I possibly can from here on out. It's really, really cool. Um, the, the website for the house, and then you can get to the conference there, is farmhouse.la, um, which is, the Laos country code, but they bill it as like a city. Um, <laughs> and uh, in like full disclosure, the next one is the same weekend as uh, RubyConf. So if you're going to RubyConf, I'm sorry. Um, not, I'm sorry you're going to RubyConf. I'm sorry that there's a scheduling conflict. If you're not Ru going to RubyConf, I would love to have you. You should go. Um, the, the last one had a theme of mapping. It's sort of like if you took This American Life and then, you know, modeled it, or, modeled a conference around that. There's a theme and then a wide variety of talks around that theme. So the last one was mapping uh, with an M, not sleepy time. Um, although a napping conf would be awesome. Uh, That's what I'm doing tonight. Yeah. Uh, so, so there was a, you know, a talk about um, anarchist revolution and uh, social media and not the way that you would expect. Um, there was a talk about navigating the gender landscape and that gender is not a binary. And that, by the way, that that's cool. a talk that everyone needs to watch. Yeah. And, yeah. It was, yeah, I mean, almost everything, uh, I mean, 
I'll be honest, there were things I didn't particularly like at the last farmhouse, that's the way it goes, but um, the, they were all super high quality. I guess it's more, I would say that there's stuff I didn't agree with, but I learned a lot and it was. There was a talk about the life cycle yeah. of someone in Skid Row. There was a talk yeah. about. Um, Definitely like their videos, right? Yeah. 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 And yes. yeah, please, please go watch them all. Uh, um, start yeah. with the gender landscape one though. Yeah, that, um, that was Maggie Mayhem. Yeah. Um, who is a um, sex educator and pornographer from the Bay Area. Um, uh, yeah, all the videos are on the website, farmhouse.la. Kobe has come down both years. And seriously, like, Kobe's a powerhouse, man. Like, Confreaks is not a little bit awesome. It's a lot of bit awesome. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, overwhelmingly Ruby stuff, but that he does things like Farmhouse Conf is a real testament to his character and his level of awesometude. So the, the last one, like I said, was mapping. The next one is November 3rd. Um, which most places in the country will be chilly by then, will still be kind of warmish in LA. Um, a couple, there were maybe 10 or 12 folks that camped in the backyard. You're welcome to do that too. Um, <laughs> and there's a, a party afterward, and it's like a, a whole day that three meals catered, and da da da. Um, and some of our sponsors for this were also sponsors of that. The, the next one in November, the, the theme is disruption. Uh, I have four speakers lined up already. Andy Bayo, who is the, nice. most notably, uh, he's the one that posted the video of the Star Wars kid years ago. Um, uh, he was also the CTO of Kickstarter, and he's putting on XOXO Conf in Portland, et cetera. Um, Shepard Ferry, um, mm. who's done a lot of things, but is probably most, most known for the Obama Hope poster. Uh, Kate Darling, who works out of the MIT Media Lab, and uh, Caroline Woolard, who does like alternative economy stuff out in New York. And uh, our gender balance here is very not great. Um, and that's also true at like tech comps in general. Um, with Farmhouse Conf, I, I tried an experiment of doing five women speakers and five male speakers, and so far it's, it's worked really well, and people have been sort of responsive to that. And the, uh, the female attendance is a little bit better too. I think it was about a third, two thirds split. So that's something. Um, the, so Farmhouse Comp 4 is going to happen as well. Its theme is future. Uh, I don't have anyone lined up yet, but it'll be in next May. So yeah, this is my last one. So I'm spending more time focusing on Farmhouse Conf. And if any of you, sincerely, if any of you ever come through uh, LA and you want to hang out or hack or whatever, I sometimes have a couch that you can sleep on. I have a dog. <laughs> you know, get, drop a line. Yeah, so um, I, I'm sticking around. Uh, this is, um, I like doing this, I like being I like being part of this. I want to keep. Uh, I want to keep doing it. It's, um, you know, uh, it was really, really hard to do this year with three organizers, effectively. You know, um, me and Shane working on program, working on sponsors, uh, dealing with venue logistics and and speakers and all that stuff, and Karin working on the party and providing a lot of uh, logistical support as well, and. Um, you know, losing Shane is, is going to make it quite a lot harder. It's part of the reason why uh, I want to kind of simplify a little bit next year. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to stick around. I'm going to keep doing Cascadia. Oh, go on, you. <laughs> Shucks. No, sincerely, like, you know, it's, it's sort of awkward, tough sometimes to take praise or whatever, and, and especially yeah. like sitting on a stage doing it. Right. Um, I think we want to like open up to uh, spe uh, speakers, uh, questions. Yeah. Anyone? If anybody wants to know anything or, we'll, I mean, we're really happy to talk about yeah, pretty like, much anything. I think so. we, we probably need house lights now. Also, you know, while people like queue up their questions, and, and Cindy's going to run around with the, uh, the mic uh, like we did earlier. Ooh, wow, that's quite a bit different. Um, I, so this time last year, I went out to um, a bar with some of the folks that were attending Blue Box and, uh, Matt Kern and Mike Taos and whatever. We came up with this idea and then pr proceeded to not execute on it for a year. 
and I, I really need help. Um, so Mitch talked about open source as people. I totally agree. That's one of the things I've realized more and more. You know, I spent a year at Engine Yard as an evangelist for open source, and I did basically like no code and no design. I just like developed relationships. And I'll, I'll get real dynamic for Jessica's picture right now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, so we want to start an organization called Open Source Offsets. The idea being um, instead of, um, you know, you, so Aaron Patterson works at at and on Rails full time. And that's sort of an exception. There's not a lot of people that are paid full time at a place to work on a thing that's open source. And most places can't afford to have someone on payroll full time. So most places could probably give a little bit of money. You know, it's like the age old, like, we used to contribute code a lot, and then we got busy, and we're doing better as a business, but now we have less time. But we do have more money. So maybe we could throw 10 grand at a pool, or you know, a grand a month, or some, some fund for open source. The idea being open source offsets would be this sort of receivership for you know, tax write-off um, donations to like, a nonprofit. And then we would turn around and hire people full time. And um, honestly, my, my biggest hurdle right now is I don't want to fuck up the 501c3 paperwork because it's not like, oh, I just don't want to pay my taxes for this nonprofit. It's like I'm going to be taking other people's money. And so I don't want to fuck that up. And I really need a lawyer to help me out. If any of you are lawyers or. Okay, let's talk. Nice. Yep. So awesome. I, need, I need like Community. a. Community. Yeah, totally. And having a stage and like <laughs> a public address system. Yeah. Um, so any questions? Yeah. Any suggestions for next year? R. Davis. No, this guy first. Ryan? Other Ryan. Hold on a second. Oh, mic. The mic isn't so necessary in the sure, room. Yeah, it helps fine. a lot with the videos. <laughs> uh, have you scoped out any places in Portland yet? I have not started to look, no. That's cool. I've got, I mean, I've, I grew up in Portland. I've only lived in Seattle for three years. Uh, so I have some, you know, I have some thoughts, but, uh, it's really, you know, the, the venue so much shapes what the conference feels like. You know, uh, we go to RubyConf, and RubyConf is almost always held at a hotel in a ballroom. And it feels very different than this. This space, even though it's actually really big and you sit really far apart from each other, it feels really close and really intimate in, in here, in this room. Um, and so trying to find something that replicates that, because I feel like that's part of this. But at the same time, is you know smaller and less expensive and not here uh, will be a, a challenge. And then you know, two, in two years' time, we're likely to be back here again. So um, yeah, it's, it's I haven't looked yet. Is the very short answer to that question? Any, was there more to that? Sorry. Uh, I have a sort of straw poll. If there was um, Cascadia across the border, how many of you have passports? How many of you would go across the border for a conf? Okay, that, that's, that's helpful data. That is helpful, yeah, we would love to do it. So much like Shane says he doesn't want to screw up his 501c3, the reason we're doing Seattle and then Portland is to, to get to the point where we're making enough money to pay a lawyer to help us start a business in Canada. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is your second year doing this and uh, I just want to say that I think the one place where you could really improve is if you would communicate and delegate more. Yeah, I agree. Uh, especially with Shane leaving, I, I think that if we're going to continue calling this Cascadia, I would really like to see you pick up a partner from Portland and a partner from Vancouver to help you. Yeah, totally. Um, and well, you have all of our resources at CLRB to help you as well. And I don't hear from you until CFP, and then I don't hear from you again until it's time to, to judge the papers. And you could use us, especially considering how stressed you get from this. It, it's not worth it. Yeah, well, Finn so. Get stressed out. So. The fuck you aren't. No, no, I am. And let me, but let me, um, let me attempt to explain but not justify why it is that we don't seek help. Um, when we, some of you may remember when we first started talking about this, we uh, set up a mailing list and we kind of had this plan where we were going to kind of try to uh, create this conference like, like we we're going to basically ask people to help us plan it and uh, to take feedback from the community and, and basically plan the whole thing in the open and uh, get people's input and all that stuff. No, 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 no. 
Cindy. I took it. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and, and we decided, uh, we started that process and very quickly decided that that was a really good way to never get a conference done. And, um, and I, again, I, I'm not saying this is good and correct, this is just what happened. We never revisited that idea and looked at ways that we could make some of the concepts work. And we should have. And I think that's a really good idea and um, maybe, Ryan, we can talk later about the way, like, specific things we can do to implement that. And Jeffy McPeep code tweeted at me today that, uh, you know, a lot of people wanted to be here or are seeing it now for the first time and we didn't do a good job sort of marketing and that's totally true. Um, and I think, I think having, you know, if not a partner, at least a um, sort of liaison or ambassador in those two places is a really good idea. Yeah. We did, um, and I'll say, are, is there anyone here who's from Vancouver or who's, okay, are you guys part of the Vancouver meetup group? Okay, we does it ever meet up? No. So here's here's the thing. We we have made a tremendous amount of effort over the last two years to reach Vancouver, and the organizers of that group don't want to hear it. They reject our messages from the mailing list. We yeah, we've had to like, I, I yeah, I I sent messages to the Vancouver list both year last year and this year that were rejected by some some moderator. Could you say all that again in the mic? The person who runs that group has been trying to pass it off for the last two years. He doesn't want to do it anymore. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so I, if he's I getting that. emails from anyone, uh, that is most likely why he's just. Yeah. So them. that's what I heard. Um, Miles Forrest, who is not here, is a is a good pal of the Seattle RB, and um, he's kind of been my guy to try and sneak stuff in. Uh, but it's been very very difficult to reach Vancouver. So uh, maybe we can talk later and. Uh, and we can try and figure out ways to do that because that's, Vancouver's a black box to me. I was a PDX RB member forever and a Seattle RB member for, well, Seattle RB hanger on for the last three years. And, uh, but Vancouver, I got nothing and, and all, of, all of our efforts have been fruitless. So, yeah. We're gonna definitely work with you for that. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate it. No problem. Here. <laughs> Hashtag, never forget. Uh, Here's, here's a fun piece of trivia. Today, at this conf alone, I've walked four miles, and yesterday I did six miles. I don't know about miles, but I have 8,500 steps. Okay, okay. And, uh, oh, 3.96 miles. Yeah. If, that's, if that's accurate, then yesterday I did twice that, because I had uh, 16, 17,000 miles when I went to bed last night. Or steps. Steps. 17,000 steps. I walk really fast, you guys. Um... Ryan again. <laughs> uh, I really liked Ryan Davis's comment, and I just wanted to elaborate on that. Um, I think what uh, the difference of trying to organize a conference by committee is versus delegating and communicating, sure. that's the difference between push and pull. So figure out what the fuck you want, and then tell us what you need. Yeah. I, I appreciate you. that you translated that to nerd so we can understand it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah, that's, I, I, had not th I had not thought of it that way. And I think that's a really, really good point. Thank you. Wilson, do you have any questions? That's unusual. Did you, where did you fly in from? From Portland? Are you out of Florida? Who uh, traveled the farthest? Where did you come from, Ro? No, okay. not even close. Okay. <laughs> Katrina came from Oslo. Okay. Who, who bought a ticket that traveled the farthest? Yeah. Okay, so outside of speakers, who traveled the farthest? What do you got? Oh, but outside speakers, though. Yeah. Aside from speakers. So we have like the West Coast represented well. Is there any inland? Cool. All right. Well, I mean, it's, it's Port, Portland, Seattle, everybody, and two from Vancouver. And a bunch of San, San Francisco. Oh yeah, whatever. And San Francisco. I mean, by hi, proxy. thanks. <laughs> I love these kids. <laughs> hmm. All right. Nice. Okay. Nice. 
sweet. Cool. Um, hmm? What do you got? Idaho? Idaho? That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. cool. You had to cross mountains to get to us. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Let me double check my list here. Before we're we... also, I mean, of course, perfectly happy to talk about this stuff uh, not while we're sitting on stage and you're on a mic. So, yeah. Kobe. Hold on. Microphone check. Okay. Yeah, I, I do organize a couple of conferences, so I know what these guys go through to make this happen. Um, but one of the keys is, and Ryan hit it, and the other Ryan hit it, uh, yeah, delegate tasks, not decisions. Um, but other than that, I think we should all give them another round of applause for the oh, effort that they've done it. and for the commitment it takes to make it happen. Thank you. So, I think that, that's probably a good place to end. You know, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, yeah. you know, it's like the last song on like Nirvana Unplugged. You can't, you can't encore better than that. Um, so, sponsors, speakers, attendees, like, you know, we've thanked you, you know, not enough times. But I want to put it like this: you'll never get these two days back. Your time is precious and dear, and you, and you gave it to us and. Not just us, but like us, royal us, or collective us. <laughs> the collective royal us. And that, that really means a lot. That means more than your money and your software and your everything else. That you gave us our time, your time and you participated in this with us. So thank you so much. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yeah. So All right. thank you, everybody, for coming.